I'm Kim Melton, technical editor from Johns Manville Industrial Insulation Group. I'm here today with Jack Bittner to talk a little bit about our new product, Thermal 1200. Jack, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jack Bittner, senior product manager for Johns Manville Industrial Insulation Group. I've been in the industrial insulation business for 38 years. I started actually as an insulator on the Houston Ship Channel in an oil refinery. After that, I went to work for a distributor in, in the Houston area, bounced around the Gulf Coast with that distributor for a while, managing different offices. Ultimately came to Denver working for Johns Manville as a uh, sales rep, product manager, market manager, had several jobs, to my current position now as senior product manager for all the industrial insulation group products. So Jack, can you tell me a little bit about what Thermal 1200 is and why Johns Manville manufactures it? Thermal 1200 has been Johns Manville's flagship calcium silicate product for the high temperature industrial insulation business for more than 40 years. Okay. It was originally called Thermal 12 Gold and we recently changed the name to Thermal 1200, um, which we'll talk about here shortly. Sure. But this product has been around, like I said, for more than 40 years. It's the workhorse has been for the industrial insulation high temperature business. One of the issues with it in all those 40 years has been its inherent nature of um, absorbing moisture when it, when it rains, for example. Okay. And that's been an issue for contractors. Although contractors love working with the product, when it rains, they have to stop work to cover the material. And I know it's supposed to be jacketed, and it always is. All insulations need to be jacketed um, as it's being installed. However, insulators can install insulation much faster than the jacketing folks, the metal guys, can come and put the jacketing on it. Okay. It just takes longer to do the jacketing correctly. Right. So what happens is the insulators get ahead of the jacket folks, mm -hmm. and you get the afternoon rainstorm, and what happens? Work stops. Everybody starts scrambling to get the visqueen to cover up the, the material so it doesn't get wet. Um, in addition, you've got material staged at 30-foot intervals right. along the pipe rack where you're working. So as the insulators move, they're just grabbing material to install it. Now when it rains, you've got to cover that material up too. So work stops as that's going on because you can't let the material get wet. The, the ASTM standard for calcium silicate, C533, mm -hmm. requires that the material be replaced if it absorbs more than 20% by weight of, of water. So if you don't get it covered and it absorbs more than that, you've got to replace it. So what happens if you have lightning or a lightning storm? Excellent question, because when there's lightning, the safety di dictates you get under cover. So the insulators have no time to cover it because they've got to get down off the pipe rack, off the scaffold, off the work area, into a safe quarters until the lightning passes. So the material's not going to get covered at all. Okay. Then it's got to be replaced. And that obviously costs time and money. Time and a lot of money. So, Jack, you said Thermal 1200 is water resistant. Now, what does that actually look like on the job site? Well, actually, it, it's easier to show it to you than to explain it. Okay. So if you'll stand back a minute, Kim, and I'll show you what that means. The key thing to notice is how the water is actually beating up and running off the insulation. That is the advancement. That's the key feature of Thermo 1200. How is that different from Thermo 12 Gold, the legacy product? Well, let's step over to the demo table and I'll show you. Okay. Jack, we've obviously just seen that Thermo 1200 is water resistant. Now, can you explain some of the differences to me between Thermo 12 Gold, the legacy product, and Thermo 1200, the new water resistant product? I can, but what I'd like to do, Kim, is start with what's not different. Okay. First of all, and most importantly, the product still meets ASTM C533 Type 1, which is the standard specification for calcium silicon. Mm -hmm. Meets all the requirements of that, which include thermal conductivities, compressive strength, which by the way is the highest in the industry, always was. Historically, the greatest strength of calcium silicon is its strength. Okay. Always has been, always will be. It meets the modulus of rupture, which is flexural strength. It meets the ASTM tests for uh, stress corrosion cracking for stainless steel. Now, it, does it still have XOX corrosion inhibitor like the Legacy product does? Absolutely it does. Um, that is th That chemistry, which is unique to the North American calcium silicate manufactured by Johns Manville, 
um, that chemistry hasn't changed either. The only chemistry that's changed is the addition of the chemistry to make the product water resistant. I know that other hydrophobic treatments will burn off at 450 degrees. Is that consistent with the water resistant treatment on Thermo 1200? Absolutely it is. All, all the chemistry to make a product hydrophobic or water resistant, whether it's for a perlite product, including our Spruel WR1200, or the thin hydrophobic blankets, our water resistant calcium silicate Thermo 1200, the, all those treatments which, which are actually integral to the chemistry, they're, 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 chemists, they're, they're chemicals mm -hmm. in the formulation, they're all organic. And beginning at 450 degrees, those chemicals begin to oxidize and burn off. It's the nature, they're organics, that happens. Is, will XOX, the corrosion inhibitor, also burn off? No, it won't, because okay. those are inorganic chemicals. Okay. It's a series of chemicals within thermal 1200 that, that provides the corrosion inhibitor XOX corrosion inhibitor, and they are inorganic. They do not burn off. They're there for the life of the installation of the products, whether it's five years, 15, 25. They're always there. They never go away, and they continue to work. Now, can you just iterate to me once more what, what the benefits are to contractors? The whole development program, the genesis of it, was around the contractor desire to have a product that can, they don't have to scramble on the job site to get the material jacketed because the insulators will always go faster than the jacket folks right when it starts to rain productivity stops because they got to climb down off of what they're doing and cover all exposed insulation whether it's staged whether it's on the pipe with visqueen to keep the water from the rain from from getting the material wet that was the whole reason for the development program what's been interesting to me which wasn't in my head when i we were thinking about this was the engineers actually like it more than I thought they would. Okay. They actually are considering some of them that we've showed it to, this a specifiable product, a feature of the product. Uh, why, did, why did you change the name? The name change was actually a coincidence. We were going to change the name of the product anyway to make it more in line with the conventions of our product. You okay. know, we have our, our Perlite product is Spruel WR1200, mm -hmm. 1200 degrees. Our mineral wool product is M D Min Wool 1200. 1200 degrees. All our products have the upper temperature limit included in the name. We had Thermal 12 Gold, mm -hmm. not Thermal 1200 Gold. So we were going to change the name of the product anyway. It was a great coincidence to time it with the added feature of water resistance, so we did. So Jack, can you show me what the difference is between Thermal 12 Gold and Thermal 1200 when it gets wet? Absolutely. So this is Thermal 12 Gold, the legacy material. I'm going to spray it with water. And you can see. It doesn't even run off. Nothing's running off. Yeah. And this one is Thermo 1200. Mm -hmm. Beads up and look, pretty much all of it's running off. Now I'm asked often when I do this demonstration, what about the inside diameter? Is that water resistant as well? Remember, this is integral to the chemistry of the product, so it's throughout the material. It's not a surface treatment. And you can see the water running off the inside diameter as well. The entire product is water resistant. So that's, that's a pretty significant difference. Now, obviously this is a huge evolution for calcium silicate insulation in general. Is there an ASTM rain test for this? There really isn't an ASTM test for rain. We searched both ASTM test domestically. We also looked internationally to see if there was a worldwide or a European test for rain. Couldn't find one. So we had to develop our own. Um, we started with the ASTM C533 standard for calcium silicate. Says that if the product gains more than 20% by weight of right. water, it must be replaced. So okay. we didn't want to be anywhere near that. Mm -hmm. So we set the top at 15%. Second thing, the average rainstorm in the United States lasts 20 to 30 minutes. So we settle on 20 minutes. It's the second thing for the time. Third is how much rain is rain. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't want to drizzle, we wanted to rain. And um, the average moderate rainstorm it is a uh, half inch to an inch an hour. 
Um, the problem with that was we couldn't find nozzles to do a half inch to an inch an hour <laughs> right. because what that looks like is a mist like you'd see in the produce department in the grocery store okay. on the lettuce. Yeah, okay. So we had to actually up it to a, uh, uh, a, a, a major rainstorm, mm -hmm. which it averages an inch to an inch and a half. And we settled on a rain of an inch and a quarter an hour. Okay, so inch sense. and a quarter an hour, 20 minutes, maximum weight gain of 15%. Okay. And ultimately, that's what we built the rain chamber to do at our research center. And ultimately, the uh, water-resistant thermal 1200 is testing well below that. We're in the 8 9% range. So obviously, these two products look pretty similar. If I'm on a job site, how am I going to be able to tell them apart? First of all, the boxes we're shipping now, mm -hmm. um, we're going through our old cartons first that say thermal 12 gold. But we're putting a large orange sticker on them, six inches in diameter, that mm -hmm. identifies it as the water-resistant version Thermo 1200. Okay. You can't miss it. Um, as we replate the boxes mm -hmm. to reflect the new graphics and the new name of Thermo 1200. The conversion, we have two factories, as you know. We've already converted our Colorado factory in Fruta yeah. to the new Thermo 1200. And that product being made there now is in the old boxes, but it has the sticker on it. We will be converting the uh, Ruston, Louisiana factory in October. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we will put the sticker on the old cartons until the new ones are there and we've run out of our old ones. And we will immediately cycle into the new cartons with the new graphics that say Thermal 1200. If they're out of the packaging, how am I going to tell the difference between the two products? They look similar. Right. They look the same, actually. It's pretty <laughs> hard to tell the difference. And the only way, if it's out of the box, is to tell the difference is to spray some water on it. Okay. And see if it beads up and runs off or not. That's the only way. They look alike to me. <laughs> That's true. Um, obviously, this is a huge evolution for calcium silicate insulation. If you'd like to know more about Thermal 1200, please visit our website at jm.com industrial or contact one of your regional technical managers.